hi everybody um what do i want to say <laughs> where do i start started getting up i was up at five i was at the even before i'd had a coffee or a cup of tea i was out the front with my extending window cleaner doing all the front bay window because it was still dark and um there's going to be no nosy neighbours around to come and talk to me and say how have you been how's everything going and oh you know uh, not that i mind talking to them normally but um it's been such a long time you know since i've been back on my feet properly and i feel that by doing things even though there's still surgery needs to be done I'm feeling that doing things is actually making me feel better, more flexible, less um, frozen, if you like. And that's both psychologically and physically. So I did that big bay window. That was the one I wanted to get done. That was a killer because I'd done inside yesterday. And um, I went for a walk later on in the morning when I'd noticed that the cars had moved off the drive. I'm talking like I'm a recluse, which I have been really. So <clears throat> I ventured out. And, you know, what at one time would have taken me, you know, five or six minutes to trot. It took me 15 minutes to get round, but I did it. And I did it without a stick and I did it without company. I stayed by the wall and by the hedges just in case I needed to topple over into one. But I didn't and everything was fine. So pretty good really up until a certain point. And then I was in the kitchen getting crumbs up from my toaster. I had a cup waiting to make a drink just to the side of me, caught it with my elbow, smashed it onto the floor, um, so I had to get that up, and made another drink, turned round to put my tea towel away, caught that one, so that was a full cup. So it's going down from there, so I thought, well, I'm not going to do any more today. I'll make a drink. I'll come and make a video. Um, what I did do, I went upstairs to see if I could find a jumper that I wanted to wear um, over the weekend and I didn't find it, I wasn't looking in the right place, I know where it is but in the meantime I came across a brand new coat still got the labels and everything on um, I've got a feeling that I bought this in 2020, 2020 when I died. Um, because I bought, I, I wore a black coat to the view and I wanted everything to be right for him because I'll always like me to look nice and he was a precise man. So I, I bought a black coat, which I wore a black pea coat. I've got a feeling that I also bought this one just in case. For some reason, I didn't want to wear the black one. So there it is. I'll try it on in a sec. Never been opened. And it's that lovely... Um, Tweedy, can you see the different pattern on the sleeve to on the body of the coat? Oh, oh, there's a loose fibre there. But look at the different pattern, and it's it's got cuffs. It turns over. So I think I bought that last year, and it was from John Lewis. French Connection label and John Lewis 
195 pounds it's quite heavy i'll try it on i think it's like um oh they're just pop-up buttons just one one button it's like a 50s swagger coat just one button and they've given me two spare ones which is handy let's have a look let's try it on to move that camera down don't I So there we have it, it's um, completely lined and no two poppers. Oh, there's two poppers. One. There. And one. There, so that's it. It's any better if I put some shoes on. to wear high heels again. So how's that? You think? It's quite nice, isn't it? I love the way you've got this pattern here. You've got a different pattern here. And then you've got a different one on the lapel. And as I say, there's just two poppers there. It's size small, French connection. And it was £195, so it wasn't cheap. I'd forgotten I'd got it. How nice to, um, a nice surprise to find a coat I didn't know I had. And it's lovely as well. I shall wear that when um, we go out because I've got a vision of where I want to go with you all and it's to the place I said before which is the custard factory. I keep calling it the custard house, it's not the custard house, that's a different place altogether. It's the custard factory where I want to take you. And um, All these shoes are lovely as well. Look, these aren't the ones I showed you the other day. I showed you some similar. Um, they're called Peculiar Choice. Um, I showed you some similar ones, but they were, uh, I think they were a bit higher heel, I think. So they, like my coat, have various patterns. I, don't, I think it was the other ones I showed you. I don't think they're here. Oh no, these are the ones I didn't show you.
So these I've never worn either because obviously I had my surgeries and everything. So they're another peculiar choice with a glittery heel. And the heel is an inch, maybe higher. But to counteract that, you've got the strap across the instep. So that's like, oh, it's Velcro as well. That's like um, additional security in a way. So both peculiar choice shoes. So we'll see. I might wear the coat and I might wear these lower ones with it. Because I need an airing. They're going to get, they're going to get run in the, if some of these shoes are. If it's this camera again. So, I want to take you, I want to sort of go to the custard factory. Um, off the top of my head, the custard factory is um, how big is it? It's a big place anyway. And I think there's about uh, 12 or 15 old factories, old Birmingham factories. It's called the Custard Factory because Alfie Bird, um, who made Bird's Custard, that's where he made it. That was the factory for Bird's Custard, which my mum always used to make, Bird's Custard. So, um... That's why, and then the developers who bought the custard factory bought other factories around and about, and they've turned them into all this big sort of community conglomerate, whatever, have you, whatever you want to call it. And it's got loads of different shops there, that are artisan shops. They've got, as I said to you before, the retro shops, so you can go and you can say, you know, doll me up, I want the 50s hairstyle or Marilyn Monroe and, you know, the retro dresses and everything. And they've got um, pottery shops, artist shops, um, jewellery. You can buy excellent jewellery there. Um, and I think there's, I think some of the jewellers, some of the jewellery there, has come up from the jewellery quarter in Birmingham. So you've got the, you know, the actual jewellery that was actually made in Birmingham for sale there. They sell all sorts of weird and wonderful things like big giraffes and squat bears and all sorts of stuff. And it's a fun place to be, really. And it's, um, I haven't been for a couple of, well, probably three years now. And I went with my granddaughter and we spent the whole day there, almost the whole day, because she kept, she kept wanting to buy. And um, they've got all the old records, retro records, vinyl records. Um, and it's just a great place to be. They've got different um, pubs. They've got different restaurants. They've got vegan restaurants anything you could want you can get there you don't need to go into Birmingham but having said that Birmingham is just a short hop away you could walk into the city centre from there well I couldn't but you probably could um, you could walk into the city centre or indeed you know get one of the buses running past which will take you straight into Birmingham city centre within four or five minutes. So that's how close you are to everywhere. And um, I want to go, I wanted to go this week. I don't think I'm going to get there this week. I've got to see my brother tomorrow um, and do some other stuff. So it's likely to be next week, hopefully. Um, it won't be on a Monday because they're all closed on Mondays like a lot of places are because they're open on Saturday. They don't want to open on Monday as well. They want their two-day weekend, Sunday and Monday. 
So we'll see how it goes and maybe we'll go next week. I'll give my new, as yet unworn, unsullied jacket an airing and my shoes as yet unsullied an airing and we'll go out. I'll do my makeup. I'll wash and blow dry my hair so I'll look the part and I won't let the brummies down Birmingham City the brummies you know okie dokie I'm gonna come back I'm gonna do a video regarding Chantal and I don't know whether Jenna's uploaded her part 2b of what she was doing but um we'll see and if she has i might do a reaction on that also so if you don't want to listen to anything about chantelle or anything about jen I'm just giving you fair warning um chantelle just makes me she makes me see red the way she uses the sexual abuse and domestic violence to bring people into a channel gain the sympathy vote get the, the super chats with everybody trying to make her feel better and quite frankly um you know she is perpetuating something that doesn't need to be perpetuated um Is what she's saying true? I don't know. I guess the only two people who will ever know are going to be Chantelle and Nada. And she's tried to get the case dismissed now, but apparently he's playing mind games with her again. The only upside, I suppose, is that it's going to be a saga and it's going to again bring the sympathy votes to her channel. Makes me so angry. Okie doke. I'm going to drink my coffee and um, I might come back and do a little video. I need to watch. I've watched one of Chantal's videos, which gave me very, very bad vibes. I didn't watch the other one, but I did read some of the comments and um, left a couple of comments. And um, it looks as though it might be something that I would do better staying away from. I don't know, but um, we'll see. And I'll be back in a bit. Okay, bye-bye, everybody.